What's going on everybody? It's your boy Brandon and today I got a pretty cool video for you guys. So I was in the studio as you guys know it's getting cool outside and that's one thing about being a really versatile photographer that you can go from one location to studio and it's really really important. So guys if you can't shoot in the studio or if you don't know how I highly suggest you start to learn because you can't shoot outside all your life. So Today, me and Tamika wanted to do a photo shoot for you guys today, but I wanted to do some modifiers, um, kind of how the light basically falls off your subject in a studio. Now, not really not good, because all of them are good. All of them can be used in different, you know, light, light ups and setups. So today I'm using three different modifiers. The first one you're going to see is the one that I love and I use all the time, even on location now. That's the 22 inch. Um, Botake beauty dish. All right, this is a pretty much a Clem Show beauty dish, and I'm using um, the one sock, uh, just a single sock for uh, a diffusion. The next one we're going to be using is a 36 inch Easy Lock um, soft box. It has two layers of diffusion: a inside baffle and an outside baffle uh, for a double layer of diffusion. Kind of something that you're normally used to us uh, on location photographers using. Um, every day kind of like in our video so we're going to use that the last one that we're going to use is a seven foot umbrella uh, no diffusion so basically i have the explore 600 pro with the extension head pointed into the umbrella and it is it is white translucent so it's a shoot through umbrella but i'm using it to bounce light into the umbrella and back to the subject this is a seven foot um umbrella parabolic umbrella um, and uh, it's going to be pretty interesting. You're going to see some pretty cool results. And I want you guys to check out the light, how the light falls off and everything. And then I'm going to put up some side by side so you guys can see exactly the type of effect that you get with each one. All right. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, comment, like, and subscribe. And uh, let's get to the shoot. Holla. Me in my dreams. I have a subject a week. Could you some TC? Forgive me, I'm impatient. Nothing can calm me down. These monsters think I'm famous. I'm just a sad clown. One more drop of poison for me. Right into my chest. Dirty little secrets I'll keep. You can't keep the rest. I gotta get low just to get high. It feels good, but it doesn't feel right. I die slow just to know I'm alive. I gotta get low just to get high. Just to get high It feels good but it doesn't feel right I die slow just to know I'm alive I gotta get low just to get high Okay, so <clears throat> um, the first thing we're gonna do when you, anytime you go in a studio, especially, it's, it's different from shooting outside, all right? Because the ambient is different than shooting in a studio. A lot of times when you shoot in a studio, the first thing you wanna do is use a light meter. Only time I use a light meter is when I'm doing studio stuff. All right, because I, when you get in a studio, you don't wanna go over and keep guessing like your settings and everything. So we're gonna use a light meter. So I'm using the um, Flashmate, um, this is a uh, Sectonic. Um, L308 X Uniform or XU. Um, so basically the way I have it is set is I have my uh, shutter speed dialed in at 250th of a second. Um, ISO is 100. 
So I dial that into my camera. So basically when I take the flash, it's gonna give me what my f-stop should be. And then we're gonna go from there, all right? What you wanna do is make sure you put this right near the model's chin or right under her chin. Uh, take a flash and then it give you a flash reading, all right? I put the flash under uh, Tamika's chin and then we're gonna take a shot. So hold the button. Make sure the light dome is right here in the, um, at the flash. All right, so it says that my f-stop should be f4. Using 1 16th power, I should be at f4, all right? Which is pretty good. Um, but again, if you wanted to use a higher f-stop number, do I say 5.6, 6.3, something like that, you go more power on your flash, um, and then it basically will give you a better f-stop to kind of compensate for the amount of flash that's coming out. So it's gonna close down your aperture more to say, hey, there's a lot of light coming at like 1 8th power, half power, it's gonna close it down to give you a more balanced um, reading, a more balanced f-stop. So right now it's giving me f4, uh, which is good. It's kind of where I wanna be at. If I wanted to go to f5.6 or something like that, I will bring out more flash, all right? So we're gonna dial it in at f4, it's good for right now. Uh, we're going to start off with the beauty dish, the 22 inch beauty dish. Show you guys some looks and some shots to get with that. Then we're going to move to the 48 and then the 71. All right. Holla. Is that the, no, I'm going to control the light. I'm going to control the light. Three, two, one. Oh, I'm going to do it Good. Good, good. We good. I'm gonna move this away just for just, just a little bit. Killer. Three, two, one. Yes, girl. All right, headshot right here. That's one thing about the 50. I can get so close with it and still get an amazing shot. Chin down a little bit. All right, guys, so let's take a little closer look at this picture of Tamika. Now, remember, most light modifiers diffuse light, while a beauty dish actually reflects light, illuminating your subject from all angles because of the parabolic disc unique type of shape it has. It wraps around your subject very well and it creates a nice good contrast in the highlighted areas now. Remember the beauty dish also provides a good concentrated light source because of its size. Where the center of the picture and the center is the brightest area and then the light gently falls off the sides creating a good harsh edge or good contrast. That's why a beauty dish is most used in studios. You can't do that because I'm cutting off your hands and stuff. Bring it in. All right, here we go. Ready? Three, two, one. Dope. Snapping away. Three, two. Dope. Good deal. Here we go. Those are some incredible beauty dish shots. So now I'm gonna take the beauty dish off and put on the soft box, all right? Now we have the Explorer 600 Pro with the extension head with the 48 inch soft box kind of boomed over her to see what kind of looks we get, all right? So we're gonna see what two layers of double diffusion without the deflector plate in the middle, see what kind of look it gets. All right guys, so there may be porches where at times where you don't want those harsh shadows, you don't want those harsh edges and contrast look on your model. You might wanna go with something like a soft box. A soft box is gonna help you diffuse that light and it's gonna give you a more pleasing, softer, even light amongst your subject. And as you can look at this picture here, her whole face is a lot more even. It's not darkening the other side besides the makeup that she has on. It's gonna be even across the board and it's gonna give you a more softer light and help you reduce those shadows.
That was shots with a 48 inch double diffuse salt box. Now we're gonna use the big boy, the umbrella, and see what kind of shots we get out of that, all right? We are going to move from the 48 inch double diffuse soft box to a seven foot white shoot through umbrella. So I am using it as a deflector right now. I'm not using it as a shoot through. I'm using it basically as like a bounce. So I'm shooting into the umbrella and I'm letting the light basically hit the umbrella and spill back out to see how much more of a softer light I can get. I'm gonna use it as a shoot through in another video or whatever, but right now, I want to show you guys how soft you can get with this seven foot if you use it as a actual like umbrella where you shoot it into the umbrella and the light bounces back, all right? Same settings I'm using, 250th of a second, 1.6 ISO 100, all right? All right guys, and wow, this is the type of look that you can expect from a large umbrella. Now remember, an umbrella is not a modifier by no means. However, it creates a larger light source, and with the larger light source comes a light spread. When that light spreads out, it creates a softer light. Oops, I got your blood on my hands. You should run. You can. Do I sound psycho? Where did my mind go? Used to be red hot, guess we went ice cold. And I know, I know, I know you might misunderstand. Don't misunderstand me. I love you, but I don't like you. I don't like you. I don't like you. It's I hope you guys enjoyed that, man. It was, it's really cool. I found out a lot of things about some modifiers that I actually really, really didn't know. It was pretty cool too. Wow, bro. <laughs> um, it was, uh, we looking over here. That's the team. I know. Anyway, so uh, it was really cool to um, shoot with all three of these modifiers. So I hope you like the look. Until next time, comment, like, and subscribe. Um, we hope to see you guys in another one. Um, but anyway, if you have any questions about any other gear that we use today, uh, the backdrop, the modifiers, everything will be in the comment section. Uh, make sure you go check out Miss Tamika's channel, which should be up by the time we get this video in. <laughs> Hopefully. Yes, exactly. So you need to do some work. Um, anything you want to say? No. She don't want to say nothing. Comment. Like. Subscribe. There you go. Oh, shoot. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. See y'all later. Peace. We out. I love you, girl.